But first, to local product. By now, most people are aware that the talented team from Frontline, Rob Sitch, Jane Kennedy, Santo Chilaro and Tom Gleisner, have ventured into the feature film arena. Their debut effort is The Castle, as in Every Man's Home is. It's a fable about an Aussie battler, Daryl Kerrigan, played by Michael Caton, whose particular castle is situated right next to an airport. As the 747s thunder overhead, Daryl thanks his lucky stars for his family. Wife Sal, and Tenny, sons Dale and Steve, Stephen Curry and Anthony Simcoe, daughter Tracy, Sophie Lee, who's recently married, Con, Eric Banner. Even son Wayne, Wayne Hope, who's in jail for armed robbery, is included in Daryl's unconditional affection. The plot concerns Daryl's fight to save his home from compulsory acquisition for extensions to the airport. The little guy takes on the big ones. It must be a mistake. And they can attack our place and we don't get a say in it. I want you to get on that phone right now and tell them where they can shove their 25 grand. Daryl, them is the Barlow group. People used to getting their way. Now, they want to expand the airport and there's one bloke who's a pain in the arse. Tell them to get stuff. Farouk, how much are they paying you? $65,000. For your place? Yes. They say the plane, they fly overhead, hey, drop the value. I don't care. In Beirut, plane fly overhead, drop bomb. I like this plane. It takes just a little while to get rid of the niggling thought that these characters are being laughed at by the filmmakers. But then you're suddenly embraced by the enormous affection the filmmakers have for Daryl and his family. Part of this is due to Michael Caton's wonderful performance as Daryl, but the film has a number of winning performances that contribute to the enduring world of the Kerrigans. It's not the best directed film of the year, nor does it have the best cinematography, but the roughness around its edges doesn't detract too much from the heart of the film. It's a simple first effort from the Frontline team, shot in a very short space of time, but for me, it was a winner. David. Well, I'm afraid it wasn't for me, Margaret. I, I really didn't get onto the wavelengths of this film at all. I thought it was patronising towards its characters. I didn't find it funny. It reminded me of the sort of humour that I thought had gone out with Dad and Dave 60 years ago. Well, it's, it's, it's nice to know it's still around. I think it's a very Australian sort of humour. Well, that may be. That may be. Maybe, maybe I'm just not into that kind of humour because I, I just didn't find it funny. And, and it's on a, a matter of whether you do make that breakthrough and think, oh, no, they, they really like this, this family. Yeah. I mean, I, I just thought it was silly. And, and technically, it really is. I mean, you say it's rough. I mean, it's very rough. Very How rough. Many Stars are you going to give this? I'll give it one and a half. Oh, David. Oh, oh you really have started off not meanly. I'm giving it four stars. My son's first appearance. Oh. Do you reckon he'll get on? Oh, no, no. He's a barrister. Uh, he's appearing for the first time as a barrister. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, Daryl Kerrigan. Oh, Lawrence Hammond. You know, Lawrence. Barrister, eh? He'd need a degree for that. Yes, yes. He, he, he's got a couple, actually. Oh, he must be as proud as Pudgy. Well, you know. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I've got a daughter. Diploma certificate, fully qualified hairdresser. The day she came home and told me she'd got into sunshine tape, it was the proudest day of my life. Yes, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. Yeah, sure makes us parents look like a bunch of dodos, eh? <laughs> <laughs>